Manifestations, frustrations. This is Lobster. And I think he's wrong about the Line 6 Fairy X bass. First up, I got nothing against Low End Lobster. I think he's doing a great job reviewing a lot of great basses. Further, he's modding things, something I can never do. Never ever do. And if I do, <laughs> somebody have to rescue me afterwards. So, further, I don't got such a job where I can purchase bases and then sell them afterwards uh, after reviewing them and then get compensated by the revenue of the videos for the loss. Uh, unfortunately, I got two less viewers to get any financial compensation out of these videos. Nope. I'm doing this for free and loving it. Just because I love basses and playing them. So, this time's up. Could Low End Lobster be wrong? A while back, I watched a video from Low End Lobster uh, where he was reviewing the Line 6 Fairy X 700 bass. As I had did something similar a couple of months earlier, I was uh, curious to find out if his opinion was the same about his bass. I was a little let down uh, when even in the opening of the video without even starting to starting to test the bass he already said that this bass would fail. I thought that was rather curious. Then when he started to go through all the models he compared just a few of the model basses with basses he owned. Three to be precise. A Music Man, a Rickenbacker and a MTD. He also compared Fender models with a Fujigen and a Sire basses, uh, which may look like them, but they're not really Fenders. I must admit that when I did the test, I also missed out on a lot of models. But face it, if you can buy a 63 Precision Fender bass, would you ever buy this Line 6 bass for its 9063 Precision emulation? But to compare these models with totally different basses, which maybe had the same pickup, uh, I don't know. What about the other characteristics? The sound is not only made by the pickups. Further, he is convinced that basses he does not own, or maybe just played once, like the Modulus or the Steinberger or Warwick, don't sound like one. The only thing I can agree upon are those bass synth models. There are only two of them uh, and they are not really good. But I consider those models as a bonus uh, upon all the other real base models. I thought it was kind of embarrassing to focus so long on a non-usable synth sound trying to get the point across that you don't like the base. I feel low and lobster how much I love all the other videos he has made is missing the, in my eyes, biggest selling point of the Line 6. The fact that you can try to emulate an old vintage bass that's financially way out of your reach, which you can then use in your recordings, and I think that's a, a huge plus. Again, I told it already, this bass is here to be heard and not to be seen. It's not a visual stunning bass. The stunning part comes when you plug it in. Uh, and when you need the sound of a Rickenbacker or a Hofner or whatever, there's more inside this bass. And you are there. One way or the other, this bass is unfortunately out of production. I feel that this has something to do with the policy of Line 6 back then and not the quality of the product. It's the first and only bass which can do things it says on the tin. Like reproducing the sound of old or newer basses or at least trying to get there. In the past I did a couple of videos where I compared this bass to a couple of modeled ones. I urge you to check those out and then watch the Low End Lobster video again. He will be grateful for that. And tell me if he's biased or not. By the way he demonstrated a 1978 Alembic and that sounded really weird. Uh, and that I think it's because um, he has to upgrade his firmware in the bass. Because the Alembic in my bass sounds like this.
further, I couldn't resist making up a little tune again where I run through a couple of models. So close your eyes. Oh, wait, don't close your eyes because then you don't know which model it is. Well, just look and listen and make your own mind up about this bass. Here we go. Signal flow in this clip was as usual the bass direct into the UAD Apollo Twin which has an MPEG SVT simulation running on it. I used the Rock A preset. And there you have it. Leave some comments if you feel I may be right or not. And that's it for this episode. I hope you liked it. And if you do like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching and until next time I see you. Bye bye.